Hey, 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 thanks so much for joining me again today. I'm Sunday Eli, for those of you who don't know by now, but today I'm speaking with the fabulous and very talented Leanna Edwards, who covers college football in South Florida, specifically the Miami Hurricanes and the FIU Panthers. So without further ado, Miss Leanna, how are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me today, Sunday. Yes, super excited to have you today. Now, Leanna, you could have covered any sport of your choosing, any league, any conference. You have a master's degree in sports journalism. Why college football? Well, I'm born and raised here in the 305, so I'm super biased. I think it's the best place on earth to live, first of all. Um, but because of that, I grew up following Miami sports and a big um, – Thank you to that is really to my father. Since I was a very young age, I was watching the Miami Hurricanes football, the Dolphins, Miami Heat, you name it. We were going to games or watching it. So from pretty much three or four years old, that's where my love for sports began, but specifically um, college football, I believe. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my favorite sport. And I think because my dad watched it so much in the rivalry with different um, family members that we have um, here in South Florida, that's really why college football has just been my love. Yeah, I'm like the NFL side of things. So I like <laughs> love when people are like super pumped about college football because I know literally nothing. <laughs> so let's start by talking about the Miami Hurricanes who are currently five and one right now. Their head coach over there is Manny Diaz. They also added earlier this year to their um, head of chief of staff there, um, Ed Reed, who is an NFL Hall of Famer and also formerly with the Baltimore Ravens. So I want to ask you a question around culture. What type of culture do you think that they're establishing or reestablishing with the Miami Hurricanes? And do you feel like that has made an impact on the season thus far? I definitely think with this new coaching staff, it's really, their whole focus is really trying to bring the U back, the U of the 80s, um, the U of 2001 when we got the championship. It's been a long time since the city of Miami and the sports culture and in general, just the Miami Hurricanes football team has really seen such a, a winning season and also that culture. So what Miami is, it's, it's swagger. So you heard for years now that swagger is back. You see the turnover chain. Now they have the offensive um, touchdown rings. It's, it's just all about, that's Miami. It's mad swag, the Cuban link chains. Um, you know, win or lose, no one can top us when it comes to culture. People try to emulate it all the time with, you know, the backpacks and the different turnover belts, but no one can do what the U does. So I definitely think with Manny Diaz, this is second year as head coach mm -hmm. of the U. Um, he was born and raised in Miami. He actually ended up playing and going to school at, at Florida State, which is quite hilarious to me, but his heart still lies with the U. And that's why um, before these, these current two years being head coach, he was the um, defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes. And now for him to take on this role as a head coach has made all the difference. Since his transition as head coach, you do see that he's made the necessary um, positions of hiring people. So for this year specifically, he's hired a new offensive coordinator, a new wide receiver coach, and an offensive lineman coach. No team can really excel on the field until their offense is in order. So I think that's been a huge issue for pretty much my entire life watching the Hurricanes and seeing that those main components, we've always kept a solid defense. And But the whole issue is that we couldn't get better on offense. We never had a leader at the quarterback position, but he's clearly saw the need that we had and he's making that difference. Mm -hmm. Now to answer the part about Ed Reed as a chief of staff, like you said, he has an array of accolades and especially being an alumni of the U and also won a championship with the team. He knows what it's like. He created that swagger. He was a part of that those athletes that created that. So as fans or that young generation that always heard about, oh, that the you, what was that like? Mm -hmm. He's going to instill that in them. So although he's might not be giving them plays or different things, he's really kind of like that, that big brother, that, that cool uncle that's giving, like showing them like mm -hmm. you have what it takes and be bold about it. You don't have to be cocky about it, but it comes. The more you're confident, it'll show on the field. And he's also building that leadership within each of these players. So whether that's, you know, they continue on in the league and move forward in the NFL or later on in their careers, aside from football, because not everyone's going to make it into the league. So it's great for them to have not only the coaches that can help them on the field, but someone like Ed Reed that's been there, done that on and off, you know, financially, what should be their next career steps and really helping to raise these men. We all know that 
these are young men, but they're leaving their homes for the first time when they come into college or they were at one school. Now they transfer. They're still in a completely different atmosphere. Right. And it's great that as a unit of the um, University of Miami, they're really creating this home field for them to feel at home and know it's a brotherhood. So I think overall the culture is really what makes the University of Miami the Hurricanes, what they are. And Ed Reed, although it's only been, you know, six games a season, is still fairly new and still going on. Um, what he's going to continue to do in the next so many years with this new role is going to make all the difference for this team. Yeah, definitely. And I think, too, like, it's a great impact for, like you mentioned and alluded to, with guys that may matriculate to the league or, you know, like you mentioned as well, not everybody is going to matriculate to the league, but Ed Reed having that experience and really able to walk people through that experience, what it might be like. Also for recruiting efforts, you know, for uh, getting high school guys really pumped up about playing for the Miami Hurricanes. I think all of those are pluses and advantages to having Ed Reed on staff. And I wanted to kind of continue from there. Who's a player that stands out at Miami that you believe can play at the next level? Foremost, I have to just give a round of applause for our quarterback, Derek King. He did transfer her, um, to our team this year, and he is our starting quarterback. And as a longtime Hurricanes fan, it's been so long since we had not only a decent quarterback, but a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the six games that we've had, we're 5-0, and like you said, and the only team that we have lost to so far is the number one team in the country. I mean, granted, but that wasn't our best game. But the way that we're moving right now, we might even see them in the bowl game, ACC um, championship. So moving forward, I think Derek King, he has really created that leadership um, role on this team that was missing because how are all these players they have no one to look up to or direct them whether it's on offense or defense but he's really taken that literally on and off the field his stats show it um, he might be a little bit smaller but he knows how to throw in the pocket and get these players the ball when they need it so I definitely think he's one of the big players that we should be proud that we have and he's only going to do better and he's definitely right now currently a Heisman Trophy um candidate so that's actually pretty cool mm -hmm. another key player that a lot of people have been talking about but might not realize what a difference he's made is our kicker jose borregales he is a, a transfer grad actually from florida international university so from the fiu panthers and just this year alone he scored 52 points from kicking like hello does anyone realize what that means mm -hmm. clearly that was such um something that we were missing before in the past and he has filled in that position and made such a difference like we've really done so great on offense because of what he's doing by kicking like you know I don't care how far that line is he's gonna make it and there's no wide right no wide left oh it's too short he makes it every time you can sleep at night oh we got a kick he's got it so I think Definitely as a transfer grad, he's stepped onto the field immediately this year and made such a difference. Now let's talk Panthers. The Panthers are actually coming off of a bye week next week. They're on a bye week this week, and they are on a three-week losing streak as of right now. So they're not doing so hot. What are the, some of the things that they could do to really kind of turn this ship around, if anything? That is my alma mater, FIU, so go Panthers. Yeah. But right now, unfortunately, obviously everyone knows we are living through a pandemic, and that has really hit this team so hard. Mm -hmm. um, not only did they lose a lot of players from last season, especially their um, star quarterback, James Morgan, that um, made it to the league with the New York Jets. Um, so that's obviously great for him. So it's left um, a hole in this team this season in the quarterback position and finding a leader. Mm -hmm. um, so each game so far, they've actually started a different quarterback, which has obviously been very hard for the team to kind of adjust and have that leadership role, like I keep saying. Um, but I really do think the whole issue is – COVID like it's cliche or whatever this like twilight zone we're living in but that's they're it's hitting this team so hard and why they, these are not supposed to be continuous by weeks they keep having to cancel and or postpone games because they don't even have enough players on the fields for practice or for the game mm -hmm. really two weeks ago they had over 24 players that were out due to COVID and it's a couple of coaching staff as well so it's mm -hmm. I actually talked to an inside source one of the players on the team and he did share with me that it's just unfortunate Obviously, everyone wants to stay safe, but it looks like they're it's going to be hard for them to finish off this season and excel because they're never been able to get their groove back. The moment they touch the field, someone's out. They're moving players who play, who originally were quarterbacks now into wide receiver. I mean, it's some 
in my personal opinion, some things that are unheard of that they're moving from different positions and such a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to go from one week you're playing wide receiver and, and now you're over here, got to play safety. Like, it, just, it doesn't make sense. But obviously, I don't blame it on the coaching staff. They, they're just trying to do what they can to get the ball rolling and not miss any more games. But I just hope with this, their next game should be next week. Um, hopefully, you know, the, the boys and the team stay safe and they can actually get back on the field because for everybody, it's just unfortunate. But, of course, we just want everyone to be safe during these times. Yeah. Well, uh, for people who want to connect with you online, and I definitely want to make sure that I plug your show, The Split with Legit, where weekly you go over uh, the Miami Hurricanes and also FIU previews for the games, interview players, staff, coaches, former players. Um, It's an awesome show. You make sure you check that out. So for people who want to connect with you online, where can they do so? So you can connect with me on all social platforms at Legit Leanna. So it's legit, and my name is spelled L-E-A-N-A. But at the end, I actually have four A's. A little dramatic, but who doesn't love it? So again, you can follow me on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, you name it, LinkedIn as well, Legit Leanna. Awesome. Well, that concludes our formal interview together. Leanna, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Sunday.